honored workers, attention. Today we celebrate the birthday of the revolution and the 100th anniversary of the Communist Manifesto of Comrade Karl Marx. Today we salute the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, which together with her neighbors is the greatest force for peace that the world has ever known. Poland is with us. Czechoslovakia is with us. Germany is with us. China is with us. All over the world, communism is on the march. The people wake from their sleep. The idea of world revolution is no longer a mere dream. The Soviet Union will triumph in peace as it has triumphed in war. We are the strongest nation in the world. We are the friendliest nation in the world. All honor to the Republic and to Marshal Stalin, the father of the Republic. That's enough, Charlie. Get it. Well, that's the way the people in the Soviet Union see the world today. But then the Russian people aren't allowed to read books like As We See Russia, written by 25 members of our own club. We here in the Overseas Press Club are well informed on what's going on behind the Iron Curtain because many of our own members have found ways to outwit the communist censors. And now, thanks to our guest of honor, Tom Kelly, who has just come back from Hungary, there's a new chapter for the book. Treason in Budapest, 1949. Yes, I covered the so-called treason trial of Cardinal Manzetti. The one behind the scenes. The one conducted by the crowd from the Kremlin. And that's where my chapter really begins, in Moscow. It's a nice sunny morning in November 1948. Everything is quiet at the Kremlin. I'm being transferred to Budapest by way of Paris. It's not so easy to get into Budapest these days, but I have a visa that's still good for Hungary. So I'm having my last bath in Moscow and enjoying. that tray on the center table. Hand me a towel, will you please? Oh, thanks, pal. Service in this hotel is getting better all the time. Well, good morning. Mr. Paul Jenkins of the Toronto Star. No, Paul's my roommate. He's not here. You will come with us, Mr. Jenkins. Now, look here. My name is Kelly. You can check it on my passport. Yes. And please get dressed at once. Okay, pal. Have it your way. I'll be right with you. Ah, oh, Mr. Kelly. My apologies. Someone has made an unfortunate mistake. Well, what about Jenkins? He's a nice guy. Mr. Jenkins is returning home tomorrow. We found it advisable to revoke his visa. I guess maybe he's homesick. I uh, see you're leaving for Paris. Uh-huh. Little vacation. You know, wine, women, song. Oh, good morning, Mr. Kelly, and have a nice time. Oh, uh, just one thing, Commissar. Yes. Yeah. You promised to make some inquiries for me about George Polk. Polk? He was uh, covering the guerrilla fighting between the communists and the royalists in Greece. Found dead last May. You said you'd try and get a final report for me on it. Oh, yes. Drowning incident. A uh, most regrettable accident. Accident? With a bullet in his head and his hands and feet tied together with strips of wire? I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly, but the latest report from our embassy says accident. Thank you. Good morning, Commissar. Accident. I didn't like the sound of that. I was doing the same kind of job. I might wind up in Budapest, just as George Pope did in Greece. But the story looked so hot, I figured it was worth the risk. So I made my plans accordingly, with the Paris office. Sure, I went through all the motions of a visiting fireman having a wonderful time in Gay Paris, just in case anybody was watching. But after a few days, I stopped playing fireman, and I set out for Budapest. meets west, and the Blue Danube is something more than a waltz by Johann Strauss. 
For a moment, it looked as if nothing had happened, as if everything were just the same as it had been when I was here 10 years ago. But everything wasn't the same. The war had left its mark on Budapest, too. The scars still showed in a lot of places. Of course, it was still a city of a lot of pride and a lot of tradition. The people held their heads high most of the time. But when they passed 60 Andrasse Street, they managed to look the other way. Here was a scar that nobody could hide. This was the house of terror, a house of torture, and its masters were Russian. Yes, a lot of things had changed in Budapest. Everything seemed as light and gay as the whipped cream on the coffee, especially in the Cafe Joy. Yes, a lot of things were just as they were when I was here 10 years ago. as if it's been 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 10 years, what's the difference? Just a few more rejection slips, that's all. Same old Yanish. Welcome, Mr. Caddy. Well, if I might make a suggestion, Doctor, I'd like to say that your second act is... You may to... not make a suggestion. If the doctor would only listen to me. Could be a first-rate playwright like Molnar, instead of a second-rate physician whom nobody wants around. Well, Mr. Kelly, for your dinner, goulash, of course. You always did like that goulash, yes? Well, confidentially, I flew over from Paris just to get the recipe for the goulash. Ah, yes. You always did want that recipe. Well, who knows? Perhaps this time can be arranged. Tell me something, Sandow. Is it just my imagination, or are all the Russians sitting on one side of the room and just the Hungarians on the other? Yes, my friend, that's the way it is in Budapest today. I see. And just where do you sit? Well, Dr. Deshti is the man in the middle. I simply believe in the art of survival. Janos, are you going to make a report of this to the secret police? No, Dr. Deshti. I would be careful about Janos. I don't think he can be trusted. Is there anyone in Budapest today who can be trusted? No one, except me. <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Sander, wasting your time on trash like this. Even if you don't believe in anything anymore, you ought to do better by your characters. They don't stand for anything. It's just an empty play about empty people. I know it is a perfect reflection of me. Sit down, Stephanie. Kelly doesn't approve of me either. Uh, Miss Stephanie Varner, Mr. Thomas Kelly. How do you do? Hello. Kelly. We used to sing a song about a man named Kelly in France during the war. Has anybody here seen Kelly? Kelly with the green neck tie. Well, I'm not the guy, but I do have a beautiful green tie. I'll wear it for you next time. <laughs> what brings you to Budapest, Mr. Kelly? I want to find out how the Russians are taking over Budapest. Whatever yeah, they're doing, they're being quite legal about it. A couple of years ago, the communists polled only 21% of the vote. Now they're the major party. Control the government, the newspapers, and the schools. How come? The 21% was the last free election. Some changes were inevitable. And not all of them are bad. Some people said the same thing under Hitler. Speaking of Adolf, isn't that a Nazi song they're singing? Yes. We still have a few left. If you must play German music, let it at least be German. Let Nazi music stay dead with the Nazis. Alexander Melnikov, the liaison between the Russian army who liberated us and the Hungarian police who protected us. So oh, nicely you put it. They say, of course, that Melnikov is in love with Budapest and a Russian in love with Budapest. is still a Russian. Please forgive me, Mr. Kelly. I only dropped in to return Sanders' play. I shall hope to see you again while you are here. Good evening, Sander. What a lovely brush off. Now, let's see, where were we politically? Oh, yes. I was just going to ask her, what about the church? Does Cardinal Menzenti have a chance? This name is not to be thrown around in public. 
Will you excuse me, please? I have an urgent appointment in the bar. Headline says death to the treader. That isn't the way everybody feels, is it? <laughs> I, I wouldn't know about that, sir. I never mix up in politics. You might ask Miss Rana sometime. She's a music teacher at one of his schools, so they say. Well, that's not only a good suggestion, but it's a good excuse to see her again. Well, perhaps. Does one compete with the Russian colonel? Stalin himself would insist upon kissing the bride. Darling, you're wonderful. Who is it, please? Tell me with the green necktie. An American newspaper man. Let him in. How did you know where I lived? Who told you? A local patriot, but don't hold that against him. Just what is it you want here? Well, Colonel Melnikoff. Look, I guess I didn't go about this in the right way. A report has to begin somewhere. I would suggest, Mr. Kelly, if you wish official information, that you go through official channels. Oh, I will. But I like to work from the outside of the circle. For example, I thought Ms. Varner might be able to tell me just where Cardinal Minzetti figures and all this fuss about the schools. I have nothing to say. If you wish to know something about the Cardinal, why don't you speak with the man himself? He isn't a prisoner. Thanks, Carol. That's a very good idea. Well, good night, Miss Bonner. Colonel Molnikov. And thanks. Oh, I, I seem to be out of matches. There are some on the piano. Thanks. French Legion of Honor. Yours, Colonel? No, Miss Varner was a member of the French underground during the war. One moment, Mr. Kelly. To me, this matter seems to be purely a domestic issue. Why should it concern you and your American newspapers? Or are you a Catholic? No, I'm not about it. But don't you remember, Colonel, the Allies signed a peace treaty with Hungary at the end of the war? Russia was one of the Allies. Well, that treaty guarantees a lot of things, including a little item called personal liberty. And believe me, Colonel, these are days when liberty is everybody's business. Well, so long. I'll be seeing you. These Americans are impossible. This, this question about Minzenti. Perhaps I should have explained that Minzenti is an enemy of the state. He must submit or he must be eliminated. Kelly will learn it is the same here as in the Soviet Union. There can only be one party and one state, and the church is... <laughs> now, what do these things matter to you and me? Nothing except you're a communist. I'm not and never will be. 
But we belong to each other. Politics can't change that. Oh, Alex, I want so much to believe that. But right now, I feel ashamed. Ashamed? Why? Kelly said liberty is everybody's business. Liberty is just a word. A dangerous word. Is that it? <laughs> Nonsense. It wasn't easy to find the cotton. The state had taken over his school. He wasn't in Budapest, and he wasn't in Estegon. Three days later, I was right back where I started, in the Cafe George. Hello, Colonel. Care to join me for lunch? No, Mr. Kelly. If I thought you really meant the invitation, I would be delighted to accept. Well, of course I meant it. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, should we sit over there? Suits me. Please understand, I have no prejudice against Americans. Oh, that's all right. I have no prejudice against Russians. In many respects, we are so much alike. Uh-huh. And so different, too. Tell me, how did you make out with your cardinal? Colonel, if your men are half as smart as I think they are, you know darn well I never even got to see him. And if you had, just how would it have helped your story? I don't know. You see, Colonel, I could write the story from A to Z without setting foot out of this cafe. I know the whole routine. I've watched it in Russia, Poland, Czechoslovakia. But up until now, I always came in on the last act of the show. This time, for once in my life, I'm in on the beginning. I want to see how you do it. Make the fix. I mean the frame up. You will excuse me, Mr. Kelly. And a tip, as you call it. Even milder insinuations have resulted in a revoked visa. And I thought this was going to be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. So did I. What will it be today? Omelette, souffle? Who surprised me? Anything but beef stroganoff. All right. And uh, please serve it over there. Hello. My apologies for barging in on you the other evening. I'm very glad you did. Thanks. But uh, how do you figure that? You said something about liberty being everybody's business. You're right. Is there some way I can help? Maybe. I need the answer to a lot of questions. One, what about those petitions against the Cardinal? None in our school yet, but others have had them. Government jobs, strong arm stuff? Of course. Has anyone ever had much trouble with the Cardinal before? Well, certainly not. He's very popular with the people. Then why haven't the people protested? What about the underground? There is no underground. The Russians take care of that. Every day, hundreds of people are arrested and never heard of again. Every day, hundreds try to flee across the border to Austria if they can. But surely someone must stand with the Cardinal. Yes, of course. But some Hungarians are like me. They're not Catholic. They don't want to get involved one way or another. I don't believe that. How about you? Thanks. Message for you, Mr. Kelly, was lifted at the desk. Yes. Tell me, just what would you say the Russians are angling for in Budapest these days? <laughs> you can tell, sir. Know what they say in Vienna? We could stand another war if we had to. Heaven save us from another liberation. <laughs> Do you know what that means? I think so. Mr. Kelly, if I could get hold of a decent car, how would you like to go for a drive in the country some afternoon soon? Well, now you're talking. But if that tip isn't on the level, we may be followed. You may be taking a big chance. I know. But it's everybody's business now, isn't it? It's quite a ride, all right. This was the hungry I never knew before. No cafes, no boulevards, Practically no roads. And in no time at all, we were completely lost. And if it hadn't been for a certain farmer and his dog, we would never have found the Mid he farm. As a matter of fact, it was the Cardinal who found us. At first, I didn't recognize him. He looked just like any ordinary farmer. But when I saw his ring, 
I knew he was the man I was looking for. Of course, I wasn't too sure how it would work out. He didn't know me. He didn't know Steve. But the dog seemed to like us. And I guess that counted for a lot. So we went with the Cardinal. And when we met his mother in the vineyard, she insisted that we sit down with him. And suddenly, I felt quite at home. I almost forgot about the questions I wanted to ask. Almost, but not quite. Your Eminence, are you dressed like this because you're in exile? No, no. While I'm here at the farm, I'm a farmer. I guess to go, you're the cardinal, but I was much happier when you were just a village priest. Yes, I too was much happier as a village priest. But I have every reason to believe that when the time is right, the government will regard me only as the cardinal primate of Hungary. I'd be quite prepared to treat me accordingly. Do you mean arrest? They would not dare. Who can tell what these men will dare? The move against the schools is the final move against the church. We had some 5,000 schools in Hungary. 3,000 of them were Catholic. And as long as I am responsible in any degree for these schools, we shall teach there the gospel according to Jesus Christ. Not according to Karl Marx or Commissar Stalin. On this point, I will not yield. Is there no chance for some compromise, some agreement? What chance is there of agreement between Christ and Antichrist? Do not misunderstand me, Mr. Kelly. I do not condemn our Russian neighbors as a race or as a people. But I do condemn the police state to which they are enslaved. We in Hungary will also be enslaved if we submit to men who owe their allegiance to the Kremlin. One must take a stand somewhere. One must draw a line past which one will not retreat. For myself, I have taken that stand. I have drawn that line. I will not surrender our schools to the domination of the state. You don't have a chance here. Isn't there some way you could get out of the country and lead this fight from exile? I will not run away. Now good men are needed here. The next move is up to the Soviets. And when will that come? Who can tell? It might come today or a year from today. The sky can darken without warning. Like this storm that's moving along now. It is nothing. It will pass. Yes, perhaps it will pass. The shadow will still be upon us. When the real storm breaks, Mr. Kelly, the enemy will not appear among us as an enemy. No. He will appear as one who wishes to save us from disaster. He will have the hero's part. I will be the villain of the peace. It is always that way. That which is evil must be made to appear good. That which is good must be made to appear evil. So it was with Hitler when he moved into Poland. So it is now with Stalin when he moves into Hungary. How do you feel about all this? I'm not worried for my son. I'm worried for Hungary. To me, sometimes, when a storm is in the making, it's a relief to say, let it come. Let it come fast and hard. Good night, Tom. I won't say thanks. I wouldn't know how to begin. Don't. The Cardinal has made me feel like a Hungarian again. Good night. Alex. Why are you so late? Where have you been? Really, Alex? Is this an official visit? Am I under arrest, perhaps? Certainly not. Then I don't think I shall take it. Please, it's important. Kelly and I went to visit Cardinal Manzetti at his mother's farm. He's truly a remarkable man. I do not understand. Why should you do such a thing? Why should you want to? You wouldn't understand if I told you. Have you any idea whether you were followed? I don't think so. 
Well, that is fortunate. But you must promise me something. Promise me you will never try to see this Manzetti again. Why? Only this morning, his secretary, Father Zakhar, was arrested at Estegum and taken into custody. On what charge? On whose complaint? What difference does that make? If he's been arrested, he's certain to be convicted. Darling, Manzetti's a traitor, and so are all those who stand with him. I'm afraid for you. Your life is my life. Now, give me your promise. I will not promise. I'm a Hungarian, and I can go where I please in my own country. Yes, you are a Hungarian. But you may not go where you please anymore. You're mistaken, Alex. Darling, please face the realities of life. Your country is free in name only. Actually, it is a province of the Soviet Union. I will never admit that. Stephanie, this is no time for sentiment. I know. This is the time to face the realities of life. I'm very tired. Good night, Alex. Good night. Ministry of Education. It's one of this music which you are playing. It is not only approved to the Polish era, but it is one of our oldest songs. I learned it when I was a child in school. You will play it no more. I have here a petition in the matter of Joseph Menzenti. You will sign first, the class will sign after you. A petition? What kind of petition? A petition demanding the arrest of Menzenti as a traitor to the state. But the Cardinal is not a traitor. To us, he is a hero. Do you want to be known as traitors, too? I will give you one more chance. Those who wish to sign may still do so, and I shall be glad to regard them as having volunteered their cooperation. Now, Ms. Varner, you will sign first, then your class. No, I will not sign. Don't any of you sign. This woman is a Russian. And why should the Russians tell us what we must do? Oh, I know we are grateful to them for many things. But the war is over now, and they ought to go home. They'll never go home unless we make a firm stand somewhere. All of us. We must draw a line past which there is no retreat. And for me, this petition is that line. I will not sign. I will not ask anyone else to sign. Class is ordered to remain here until I return. Miss Varner, you will come with me. I never interfere in police matters. It's a friend of yours, too. Stephanie. Are you sure? Absolutely. 
I was supposed to pick her up after school, but the secret police beat me to her. She's right here in this building. Yes, sir. Never mind. Aren't you going to do anything about it? There's nothing I can do. It is not my department. She will be questioned, that is all. NKVD questioning? If Stephanie were my girl, I'd figure out something. You don't understand. Maybe I don't. Are you sure you do? afternoon a few days later. I got a summons to drop in on Colonel Melnikov. I wasn't sure what was on the fire until I stepped inside and a familiar voice said, Ah, oh, Mr. Kelly. Mr. Bella. So nice to see you again. Must you enjoyed your vacation. Loved it. I live for wine, women, and song. Uh, they have come to our attention, Mr. Kelly, certain articles recently appearing in the American newspapers which are, well, vaguely reminiscent of your style. Oh, interesting. Is my byline on them? No. Well, then they can't be mine. My contract calls for my name to appear on every article I write. Oh, I see. And the office is very careful not to violate a contract. Of course. That's all, Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Not at all. Tell me, Mr. Bailoff, is there any statement you would care to make on the general situation in Hungary at the present time? I'm only a visitor here, and besides, I make it a point never to interfere in the affairs of a, of a friendly neighbor. Okay, Mr. Bela, and thank you. Shall I cancel this visa, Comrade Commissar? Oh, no. but I would urge the utmost alertness by your staff in all matters affecting public security. Now, Colonel, 
Please arrange the conference with Hamrad Rakoshi, Vice Premier of the Hungarian Government. Colonel Timmer, head of the regular police. Gabriel Peter, head of the secret police. I need hardly remind you, gentlemen, that the Politburo in Moscow is not interested in explanations. It deals only with results. And the results in the case of Joseph Mincenti have been negligible. Someone has failed miserably. Comrade Rakoshi, as Vice Premier of the Hungarian government, for all practical purposes, you are hungry. How do you uh, analyze the situation? What else could we do? We took over the schools, but most of the teachers in their hearts are still loyal to Mincenti. We have given him every opportunity to escape, to leave the country. He refuses to leave. I assure you, Comrade Commissar, you will not find it easy to intimidate this man. How distressing. You do not understand, Comrade Commissar. The Cardinal is still very popular with the people, in spite of our attacks upon him in the newspapers. Perhaps, Comrade, you will remember, he was a leader in the anti-Nazi resistance. And at heart, he is a peasant of the peasants. He opposed our program for land redistribution, yes. But only because it didn't give enough to every farmer. If we proceed against him now without some real evidence, it might prove to be disastrous. If we do not proceed against him now, Comrade Colonel, it will also prove to be disastrous. Let us be realistic, gentlemen. You see that this cardinal is now under house arrest in the cathedral at Estegal. I ask you, in all logic, how much longer do you Hungarians think you can continue to play out this little farce which you call protective custody? Either the man is under arrest or he's not under arrest. Each day that he remains at liberty, the prestige of your government suffers. The prestige of the Soviet Union suffers. Now, I admit this situation is not one of our seeking. No one asked for a final showdown with the church at this time. Once the issue is joined, there can be no retreat, there can be no surrender on our part. This religion, like all religions, remains the inevitable enemy of the Soviet state and is treated as such. We must destroy this man and the faith that is in him, or he will destroy you. Well, Colonel Timmer, what do you suggest? You put it that way, Comrade Commissar, there's only one answer. Let him be arrested at once for conspiracy against the state. Colonel Peter, you have a suggestion? I agree with Colonel Timar. Let him be tried by a people's court. And hang for a traitor. The sooner the better. Excellent suggestion, comrade. But is it enough? It will not serve our purpose to destroy the man and create a hero. We must destroy something more than the mere man himself. We must destroy everything about him. His reputation. Suppose, suppose we told the world that he was anti-Semitic. But everyone in Hungary knows that the Cardinal is not anti-Semitic. He protected the Jews against the Nazis. He even hid them in his own cellars. But the world outside does not know about that. The charge of anti-Semitism will be effective in time. If we repeat it often enough. Like Hitler, you mean? The technique of the big lie? Thank you, Colonel. <laughs> yes, uh, that's a very good technique indeed. Do you have any other suggestions? No. No, but I wouldn't think it desirable to make a political martyr out of a cardinal, especially during the Christmas season, which is now approaching. Excellent, Colonel. Yes. Yes, we must be very careful of all these things. Even an anti-Semitic traitor must be brought to trial at exactly the right time. Not too soon, not too late. Yes, we must completely discredit this man. In his own country, in his own church, in his own soul. But uh, not before Christmas, Comrade Rakoshi. Not before Christmas. Best wishes from our chef for a very merry Christmas Eve. Beautiful. Perfect. 
Much too perfect to eat. <laughs> oh, and here's something for our friend in the kitchen with my compliments. And something for you, too. Why, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I know our chef would like to thank you personally. He's rushing to catch a plane. He's spending his holidays with relatives in Switzerland. No, no, shh. Champagne. This is a great day for me. I have been sued for plagiarism. Isn't it wonderful? Plagiarism? Well, that's serious. That's literary larceny. Oh, my dear boy. In Budapest, it is taken for granted that sooner or later in the theater, everybody steals from someone else. The question at issue is not, did you steal the play from so-and-so? The question is one of good taste. Was the play of so-and-so worth stealing? Did the defendant distinguish between a brilliant playwright and a dull one? I might not write the best plays in the world as yet, but uh, I only remember the best. And my friend, congratulations on those articles. Articles? What articles? The unsigned ones, which have been appearing in American newspapers. Quite daring, quite indiscreet. One wonders how you got the recipe for getting them out of Hungary. To Miss Varner? No. If we are to drink a toast, let us drink to freedom. What kind of odds are they quoting around here on freedom these days? Not half enough. Oh, oh. To freedom. To those who live for it. To those who die for it. To freedom. Well, uh, will you excuse me for a moment? I see one of my lawyers is at the bar, and if I play my cards right, who knows? He might even pay for my dinner. What's the matter, Steve? Nothing. Have you seen him since, uh... No, and I don't want to. That isn't true. Maybe it isn't, but what can I do about it? I hoped Alex might be one Russian with courage to think for himself, live with his heart. Oh, this is no way to spend Christmas Eve. I have a much better idea. See if you can meet me here in an hour. But don't come if you think you're being followed. What is it? Now, don't ask any questions. It'll take your mind off things. All right, Tom. Thanks. Forget it. Take extra good care of yourself, Janusz. Oh, I wish, sir. And you might wrap up that cake. I may want to take it with me. Good evening, Colonel. You Americans amaze me. I felt certain you would never speak to me again. This is Christmas Eve. Peace on Earth, goodwill to men. Even during a war, there's sort of an armistice tonight and tomorrow. I was never brought up to believe in Christmas. In my country, the party... Oh, let's forget politics for one night. Is there any way you and I could take a nice little walk without being tailed by one of your boys? I'll meet you outside. We can talk in my car. Okay. You don't want to walk. We'll ride. Together. But now they have to go underground in a 
barred cellar, eat Christmas cake together. How do you figure that out, Alex? Sometimes there are difficulties between countries that do not exist, between individuals. Well, good night all. I'm going up on a roof and see if Santa Claus can break through the iron curtain and get down a few chimneys. Good night, Doc. Oh. Blow out the other candle when I get to the top of the steps. There's not supposed to be any light down here. Or the mice. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Kelly. And thanks. Merry Christmas. Individuals. Next morning, Stephanie and I went to Estegon for Christmas, and a wonderful Christmas it was. We got there in time for high mass. For a moment, you could almost forget what was coming up, but only for a moment. When I took a look at the guards, I knew they hadn't come to pray. I knew this was the end of the road, and so did the cardinal and everyone else in that church. And so, my dear good people, the days of the Caesars are always with us. Innocents are massacred. The brave are compelled to go into exile, like the Holy Family itself on its flight into Egypt. Yet the word of God abides in the hearts of men. Nothing can destroy that. For it is the only reality that transcends all other reality. Today, Christ is born again for our redemption. And so we too are born again. And so on this, the birthday of all mankind, let us stand firm in that faith which makes us free men. Free before God. Free before Caesar. Let me affirm once more, I love my country as I love my church. If I resist the Russian authorities who are among us, I resist them for the same reason that I resisted the Nazis who once held us in bondage also. I am against tyranny in all forms and under all labels. Some of you I know have been asked to testify against me, to sign petitions against me. I forgive you freely, for I know the pressures to which I too will be subjected. Time is drawing near when I shall be taken from you. And so I say to you, as to my fellow bishops, be of good heart, engage in no demonstrations. Pray for me as I shall pray for you. And remember, please, now and as always, I pray for a world of charity, a world of justice, I pray for my accusers, as I pray for you, my own people. And today, on his birthday, may God be with you. And all the days of your lives. word from your secretary, Father Zorkar? No. No word, Mother. They will torture him, of course. They will tell the world that he has confessed to all kinds of things. Yes, they will say that he has confessed. It's always the way. 
and the world will never know for sure what a good young man he really is. It only takes a little poison to ruin a well on a farm or to spoil a reputation in the big city. No matter what happens, we must speak for the truth, even in prison. And if the world chooses to remember us, we hope we will be remembered for what we did with our lives in the days of our freedom. Come at last. Well, Major, what are your instructions? You're to come with us at once, but you're to change to street clothes. Street clothes? Yes, this is not a religious procession. There must be no public demonstration. My son. years I've given my life to God. If they choose to take it now, they will only discover that it is already spoken for. Taken in no conspiracy whatsoever. I shall not make any confession. If, however, you should read that I confess and even see it authenticated by my signature, regard that as merely the consequence of human frailty and in advance i declare such acts null and void and so the real trial began the trial that nobody ever heard about Again. When did you first begin to conspire against the Hungarian state? I have not conspired against the Hungarian state. But you have refused to cooperate with the government, have you not? I have refused to cooperate with those who have taken over the government. Ah, then you admit that you are guilty of treason. Is that I it? deny that I am guilty of treason. I say it is the present government that is guilty of treason. Can the government be guilty of treason? This is not the true government of Hungary. It is a Russian government, appointed to office by Russian commissars, kept in office by the power of the Russian army. Answer the question. Can the government be guilty of treason? Yes, the government can be guilty of treason. Treason to God, treason to Hungary, treason to humanity. You've always been against the government, is it not so? I have always been against tyranny, wherever I found it. How many times have you been confined to jail? Three. First, in 1919, as a young priest, I opposed the administration of the dictator, Bela Kuhn. You will refrain from referring to the name of Bela Kuhn, the Trotskyite. 1944, as a bishop, I spoke out against the cruelties of the Nazi occupation. I found myself again confined to prison. Today, as a cardinal, I find myself in prison once more. Only this time. What is your real name, the name you were born with? My family name is Pem. A German name, is it not? Yes. The name is of German origin. 
When did you change your name to Vincente? When the Nazis first occupied Hungary. Why? Why did you change your name? Were you ashamed of it? No. It's a German name. I wanted no favors at the hands of the Nazis. So I took a Hungarian name. I took the name of the village in which I was born. Cheminzent. Why are you against the Jews? I am not against the Jews. I have suffered with them. I have worked with them. I regard them as my brothers. You are working for the return of the monarchy in Hungary, are you not? I am not working for the return of the monarchy in Hungary. Why did you speculate in the black market with American money? I did not speculate on the black market. I bought clothing and food for the poor. With the specific approval of the government. You are working with the Pope to bring the whole world to war with Russia, are you not? That is not true. The Pope prays for peace. He works. But you have an allegiance to the Pope, is it not so? Yes. Matter spiritual, I have an allegiance to the Pope. As between your allegiance to the Pope and your allegiance to Hungary, which would you say is the greater? I do not have to choose between my God and my country. I find it quite simple. To love the one without betraying the other. Oh. Oh. Permit me to observe, Your Eminence, that there are those who do not find it quite so simple. Your secretary has confessed many times. Every day he confesses a little more. Come, Your Eminence. I permit a young man to suffer needlessly. Give us your confession now. Let there be an end to all these questions. No. I will never confess. For I have done nothing to injure my country. Neither has my secretary, Father Zokar. Say he has confessed. I say it is because you have tortured him beyond the point of endurance. I say, oh. Father of mercy. Have mercy on us all. You see, Comrade Commissar, it is not so easy. We've had the Cardinal on his feet ever since he was arrested. Secretary will confess to anything. Cardinal will confess to nothing. Then we must find those whose testimony will support that of the Secretary. Arrest everyone who has had any dealings with the Cardinal in the past month. And for his eminence? For his eminence, I think we need special medical attention. Very special. I just don't believe it. They say here that the Cardinal has confessed to the crime of treason against the state. What do you expect, my dear? Our Russian friends are very efficient in these matters. You said it. If they arrest a man, he either confesses or is never heard of again. That'll be all, I think. Oh, by the way, where's Janusz? Janusz is not working tonight, sir. That's strange. He wasn't here last night, either. Tell me, Thomas, why do you Americans make so much trouble for yourself? Why do you not accept life as it is? If a certain matter is fait accompli, then it is fait accompli. Is it accompli? Where do we go from here? Does the Cardinal fall out of a window in a high building like Jan Mazarek in Prague? Is he found in the Danube some morning with a suicide note in his hand? Or does he get a fancy dress trial like so many of the ones I covered in Russia? The kind where nobody ever pleads not guilty. I admire your power of analysis, but at the moment I'm more concerned about the state of your health. Don't worry, Sandra. Never felt better. But thanks for the warning. Good night, Steve. Good night, Tom. See you in the morning. At 10. Excuse me, sir. You were inquiring about Janusz. That's right. I have found out for you where he lives, on the other side of town, somewhere at the end of Avenue Anu. Thanks, friend. I may want to send him an old Christmas card. This doesn't make sense. It isn't credible. If his eminence has been meddling in politics, he has to take his chances, just like anyone else. Meddling? 
The Russians are doing the meddling. They have stolen a whole country from us, and what do we do? We sit around in the cafes as if nothing had happened. We drink our coffee, read our newspapers, and wonder whether the Cardinal was a little out of line here and there. Maybe more of us should be out of line with him. A few people would just stand together. They probably disappear separately. If I may say so, Stephanie, I'm afraid you're much too impressed with Kelly. And your acceptance of even temporary employment as secretary is most indiscreet. Kelly is a very courageous man. Perhaps so. But he's a very bad reporter. The first duty of a good reporter is to survive long enough to tell the whole story. And I doubt that Kelly will. Are you trying to tell me something, Sander? I only know what I overheard. Certain steps have been taken, even though unofficial. When? How do I know? If I were Kelly, I wouldn't want to be alone, especially not tonight. Did Mr. Kelly, the American newspaper man, take a cab? Yes, Miss Ron. Do you know whether he went to his hotel? No. He told the driver to drop him off at the end of Avenue Agnew. Thank you. through or not. But the doctors were trying to put him together again as best they could. It was a little different at 60 Andrassi Street. They were taking people apart, but they were being scientific about it. The medical reports on the examination of the Cardinal speak for themselves, Comrade Commissar. He will not confess. He will not yield in any degree. He must confess. Must be. Very well, but there are limits past which we cannot go if the prisoner is to be able to stand trial. Russia, we have no difficulty with such matters. Be reasonable, Comrade Commissar. These confessions take time, even under torture. But there is no time. Public trial must be scheduled without delay. It will not be easy. The night His Eminence was arrested, he wrote a personal letter warning people not to believe any confession that might be attributed to him once he was under arrest. Even if His Eminence should confess in time, how are we to explain this document in his own handwriting? Simple. When he confesses, let him repudiate the warning against the confession in his own handwriting. But that will merely remind the people that his eminence has obviously been under considerable pressure. How will that look before a jury? There will be no jury. The case will be tried before five judges of our own choosing. Uh, tell me, doctor, are you quite sure you've tried every inducement with the cardinal? Every type of treatment has been considered, Comrade Commissar. But since it is desired to present the prisoner in court in the near future, we have found it advisable to concentrate on psychological rather than on physical pressures. We have therefore alternated periods of sympathy and understanding with periods of denunciation and disapproval. The prisoner has not been allowed to sleep for more than an hour at any one time. His cell is completely illuminated day and night. To date, he has been examined on 80 different occasions. The diet is sharply restricted, except for large quantities of hot water. The result has been moods of extreme elation, followed by moods of extreme depression. We have given morphine, we have withheld morphine. Results inconclusive. We are experimenting currently with scopomorphine. But I would recommend that this medication be reserved for later use. If an extreme form of passivity can be induced, it would be more useful at the public trial. Oh, yes, one final note. No visitors. 
All communication with the outside world is denied to the prisoner. Very good, Doctor, but not quite good enough. Time is running out. Just when may we expect the confession of the defendant, Minzenti? Who can say, Comrade Commissar? This man, Minzenti, is not a Russian. He has no feeling of guilt about anything. And when a strong man has no feeling of guilt, he may never confess. He may go on protesting his innocence forever unless... Yes, Doctor? Well, there is still the technique of hypnotic and post-hypnotic suggestion. Presents certain dangers, of course, to the patient. We are not concerned with the danger to the patient. I cannot guarantee the results, of course. But sometimes if scopolamine is administered in sufficient quantity, a kind of twilight sleep is induced, and control of the patient is established for many hours at a time. All inclination to resist is removed. Sometimes the whole personality is radically affected. Very well then, Doctor. If we can change the personality of the defendant Vincenti, let us change it by all means. The others? Yes, Comrade Commissar. Uh, one need not be too subtle with the others. Say it after me. Yes, I confess. Yes, I confess. Yes, I confess. good for you to be seen here. Do you know the safer place? See that I'm not disturbed. For your private files. Heil Hitler, Heil Stalin. Where did you get this? It must be some joke. It's no joke, Alice. This is the calling card of a new kind of street gang. They attacked Tom Kelly last night on a little side street. Why didn't Kelly come here himself? Because he's still unconscious in the hospital. What will you do with this Nazi gang? One street fight does not make a battle. There are no Nazis in Budapest anymore. Oh, yes, there are. They call themselves the Arrow Cross, and they're barbarians even if you take them over and call them communists. Stephanie, enough of this. Vilmus Olti, who's going to preside over the Cardinal's so-called trial. Olti is a leader in the Arrow Cross, worked for the Nazis all through the war, and now he's going to sit in judgment on a man who fought against the Nazis all through the war. This is merely a matter of temporary policy. That policy is made by the party. But Alex, you have to live with that policy. How can you collaborate with the Nazis? Where is your conscience? Conscience? If you mean personal responsibility, all responsibility is in the party. And the party through the Politburo is the sum total of everything we are. And the party can do no wrong? The party can do no wrong. Then all the Russians who died to stop Hitler have died in vain. Because Hitler lives on in you and every other Russian that plays the game the way that Hitler played it. What would you have me do? Face one question honestly. Are you living for yourself? Or are you living for the 14 men who rule in the Kremlin? A Russian must either live for them or die for them. There is no choice. You're wrong, my darling. There's always a choice. Oh, Alex. Somewhere in Russia there must be people who feel just as you do. Thousands of them, millions of them. Oh, I know there's no such thing as an underground in Russia, but maybe it's time someone started one. Maybe a person-to-person -person relay system that tells the people the truth about what's going on in Hungary and the rest of the world. Don't you see, darling? There's our choice. Oh, I know it wouldn't be a very long life, but it would be a wonderful one while it lasted. We'd have something to live for, and when the time came, we'd have something to die for, too. Try and truth, Comrade Colonel. Not at all. I've just finished my questioning of the suspect. 
Lieutenant, you will take Miss Vaughn into custody at once. Remand her for further examination. Charges, espionage, and treason. Congratulations, Colonel. Secret police have had this woman under surveillance for quite some time. There is no choice. I'll Hitler, I'll stop. <laughs> Go over all that again. Surely you know everything about me by now. You were a music student in Paris when the war broke out in 1939? That is correct. And you remained in France, support with the French underground? Yes. Why? Because I wanted to do what I could against the Nazis. But Hungary, your country, was fighting on the side of Hitler. That was one of the mistakes my country made. You were a personal friend of Joseph Mincenti? I met him once. That's all. Then you are ready to testify against him. I know nothing. How can I testify? You're conspiring with Vincente to overthrow the government. Confess it now while there's still time. I have nothing to confess. Answer the questions, Miss Warner. You will answer the questions. Are you prepared to testify against Cardinal Mincente? No. I will never testify against him. Very well, then. Let us put it a little differently. Are you prepared to testify against Colonel Melnikoff? You were acquainted with Colonel Melnikoff, were you not? As a matter of fact, you were in love with him. You deny this? Well, what do you say, Miss Marta? Just what did Colonel Melnikoff mean to you? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. Confess, Miss Marta, while there's still time. I will not consent. I have committed no crime against the state. Yes, I was in love with Colonel Melnikoff. But is it an act of treason to fall in love? Doesn't matter now. He has made his choice. I have made mine. Long live hungry. <laughs> The record will show that all of the seven defendants are charged with conspiracy to commit treason against the state, and that all seven have confessed. Father Nodj, Prince Esterhazy, Father Zakhar, Laszlo Tote, Father Ishpanki, Professor Boronyoi, and the chief conspirator, Joseph Minzenti. There remains for this court only the problem of determining the degree of guilt for each of the defendants. And for the defendant Minzenti, the state prosecutor asks the penalty of death. In his own behalf, the defendant Minzenti submits to the court the following statement. In his own handwriting, I wish to lessen the present tension and voluntarily admit that, in principle, I committed the acts in the indictment after 35 days of constant meditation, I consider that an agreement between church and state is necessary. I hereby willingly declare, free of pressure, that I am willing to withdraw from the exercise of my duties as cardinal for a time. The prisoner may rise and address the court. The prisoner may rise and address the court. Joseph Minzenti, you have heard the confession. Is it correct? Is it your statement? Yes, it's my statement. And it's your handwriting? Yes, handwriting is my own. Made willingly and without pressure. 
I wish for peace. Peace for my church. Peace for my country. Take the prisoner away. Sentence will be passed Tuesday. Alex, this is a girl you love, and she hasn't been seen since the afternoon she came here to see you. If you have not already made arrangements to leave Budapest, I would suggest that you do so at the first opportunity. I'm not leaving Budapest until I get the whole story of what's been going on here. The trial was well covered by the press. The trial was well covered by a select group of local correspondents who never had a chance to speak with the Cardinal. There were two American newspapermen present. Why don't you talk with them? I have. They refused to sign your statement saying there was no censorship. Sure, the Cardinal confesses. But to what? Nothing that matters. Nothing that makes them guilty of treason. You Americans are so naive. Always it is the individual you are thinking about. You mean you don't even think of Stephanie anymore? Where the welfare of the state is concerned, what does it matter who lives and who dies? Sure. What is the difference? If you Russians are going to make the whole world over in a hurry, someone's bound to get hurt. Sometimes it's 10 million of your own people locked up in slave labor camps. Other times, it's just a funny little waiter like Janusz, or a cardinal, or a girl one might have loved. Okay, Alex, you stick with your dreams. I'll play along with mine. Only the next time you get back to Russia, take a good look at everything and then ask yourself, why did your sister and her children have to die in Hitler's gas wagon? Was it so you could build a better world with whatever remains of the Hitler gang? You Americans must recognize that a good party member is always loyal to the party. So long, Alex. Is it my imagination? Or do I hear somebody shouting, Heil Hitler, Heil Stalin? sentence on the Cardinal, Alex wasn't in court. He was in Stephanie's apartment, trying to live over the memories of a girl he had not been able to protect. statement from the defendant Joseph Minzenti. I have half a century on my shoulders. Half a century of definite education and principles. This education, these principles, 
are built into the life of a human being as railway rails are anchored into the earth. This explains a lot of things. For more than 40 days, I have been before the police and the court. They ask me, and I answer. These questions and answers are not only for those who question me. For a man must also answer his own soul. I have never been an enemy to the Hungarian people. I have no quarrel with the workers, the peasants, to whom I and my family belong. This morning I prayed to my Lord. I asked for peace. I have no quarrel with the Russian people. But I do condemn the police state to which they are enslaved. distant future. Peace in our time. Joseph Minzenti, you are sentenced to imprisonment for the remainder of your natural life. Peace. When the local correspondents finally caught up with Commissar Belov, no one was worried about Alex or the Cardinal. There were too many other questions before the house. All over the world, communist leaders were saying they would fight on the side of Russia in the event of another war. Well, how about it, Commissar? Does that mean peace or war? But believe me, gentlemen, Russia wants only peace. Russia wants peace at all times. Good morning, gentlemen. Well, Commissar Bellot. Oh, yes, Mr. Kelly. Just one more item. Yes? And what about Cardinal Manzini? Is he serving out his life sentence at hard labor, or is it true that he's suffered a complete breakdown, both mental and physical? <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly, but like yourself, I'm only a visitor here in Budapest. Well, people are asking questions all over the world. What are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell the United Nations about all this? Why, Mr. Kelly, we're going to tell the United Nations precisely what I've told you. The Soviet Union is not concerned in the domestic policies of the Hungarian government. Neither, I trust, is the United Nations. Good morning, Mr. Kelly. This is where I came in. Budapest, where East meets West. The Blue Danube is something more than a waltz by Johann Strauss. I have the story about Stephanie. Because I knew what no record meant. No record meant death or worse in a slave labor camp. Goodbye, Steve. Wherever you are. To freedom. To those who live for it to those who die for it. Goodbye, Alec. You Americans must recognize that a good party member is always loyal to the party. Goodbye, Your Eminence. Now and as always, I pray for a world of peace, a world of charity, a world of justice. Someday, if we could ever get through to the Russian people, things might be different. But right now, the only people who are getting through to anybody are the Soviets. But don't worry, we're blocking them in a lot of places. We turn the back in France and Italy with the Marshall Plan. We stop them cold in Berlin with the airlift. Oh, I know they're still gambling on Germany, and Austria, China, and India. But between you and me, I think they'd still settle for peace rather than war. But if you want peace with the Russian bear, take it from me. You can't let them walk all over. If he steps on you, you've got to yell. And keep on yelling about a lot of things. And one of them is a man named Minzinti. Another is Loyaj Ordaz, the Lutheran bishop, Budapest, who still hasn't been hurt. Then there's the little matter of the 14 Protestant ministers who are still in jail in Bulgaria. You see, the way I look at it, we're living in a time when liberty is everybody's business. Neither there's liberty for everyone, or there's no liberty at all. 